In this video, let's see a numerical problem of the chapter inverse trigonometric functions. It is based on the knowledge of trigonometry of triangles. When we started in class 10th, we saw some formulas and those formulas will have a major importance everywhere in mathematics, specifically these type of problems. Let's see what the question has to say. The question is a very simple evaluate or simplify type of question. Two parts are given to me. The first is sine cos inverse 4 upon 5. The second is sine cosec inverse 17 upon 8. Right? Let's solve the first part first and then we move on to the second part. The first part is having outside sine inside cos inverse this story becomes simple when I have sine and sine inverse, they cancel, the answer is simply what is in the bracket. But if I have one sine, one cos inverse, some things have to be changed. Let's see a triangle to it. We have already studied about this triangle, that in a right angle triangle, if it is 90 degrees at an angle, and I have an angle called as theta here, suppose. So, what is cos theta? Cos theta is nothing but as base upon hypotenuse. So, the base has to be what? The base has to be the side attached or inclination should be there such that the side which is related should be the base. 90 degrees opposite should be the hypotenuse. Now by Pythagoras theorem, I already have one thing in my mind that hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square. Now this is known as the Pythagoras theorem. Everybody knows this. Class 10th also had an application to this. Now, 5 square that means 25 is equal to base square plus perpendicular square. We do not have the knowledge of perpendicular. Let's find it out. 25 minus 16 is 9. Root of 9 is P which is equal to 3 units. So, since it is 3 units, 3 is the side here. Now, 3 becomes my perpendicular. 4 becomes my base, 5 becomes my hypotenuse as you can already see the whole story on the board. Now, I have cos inverse as 4 upon 5. What would be sin inverse? Sin inverse would be simply when I find out sin theta, it would be more clear. Sin theta is what? 3 upon 5. So, sin inverse is what? 3 upon 5, right? So, the question now changes to sin and it becomes something in the form of I want sine inverse. So, sine inverse would be called perpendicular upon hypotenuse that is 3 upon 5. Now, sine and sine inverse get cancelled, they nullify each other's effect. The answer is left as 3 upon 5 only. So, my answer is 3 upon 5. So, the first part was very simple, just you need to draw a triangle, know the perpendicular, know the hypotenuse and the base, apply Pythagoras theorem if needed and then get solving, get started. What about the second part? The second part is related to sine and cosecant. Now, there is a simple, everybody knows the relation that sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. So, if I have cosecant inverse as 17 upon 8, what is sine inverse? Let's see. The second part tells me about sine and cosecant. So, I have sine and sine inverse is 8 upon 17 in this case. How is sine inverse 8 upon 17? By the simple knowledge that sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. Now, sine and sine inverse nullify each other's effect. What is left? 8 upon 17 which is the answer. So, every time in these type of questions it is not necessary that you need to draw a right angle triangle. If needed, only then go about drawing it, solving it, finding the final answer. Else, you can also use the properties such as the reciprocal ones 
in certain questions. In the next video, we see some more problems of this type to understand better and become more knowledgeable.